welcome to this episode of Focus On with me, Gamakhetsu Musibili. Every year on the 8th of March, International Women's Day is celebrated to shed light and honour women's accomplishments, as well as raising concerns on gender disparity and discrimination. I'll be speaking to a number of pioneering women and female leaders about how they shape the global conversation on women empowerment. Natasha, thank you so much for your time and you look lovely by the way. Thank you. So thank we're you. here to obviously advance the female agenda. Um, what has your experience of leading Women's Summit been so far? Well, I just walked through the doors. I'm seeing tackies and sneakers and power suits and I feel like that's a representation of us. We can rock high heels, we can mm. put any different hats on. So, so far good. A little bit of nervous because I'm a guest speaker today. So, but really excited to be here. Really honored. Mm. So now the criteria for entering Miss SA obviously has changed. Women who are mothers and women who are married can now um, enter the competition. What's your opinion on this move? I mean, we can't preach about inclusivity when we don't practice it, right? Because I feel like when you look at a woman, we, we should be able to be mothers and wives and have children. And, and I feel like that's a different experience that you bring to the table. And as Miss South Africa, like, you literally hop on one flight off on the, on the other one. So I feel like you are multifaceted. That's just an element that really makes us so diverse. And why not celebrate and really just soak it all in? You are an empowered, educated woman yourself and you've touched on the bursary initiative yes. that you have given students the opportunity to further their studies. What does this mean uh, for women particularly? What is the importance for education for women in your, in your opinion? I love to always speak out of a personal experience and I think um, coming back to South Africa everything was very, very personal that I touched on, spoke on whether it was education, being financially excluded, whether it was grief. And that's something that I personally have experienced when I was just out of school. We didn't have the finances to study. I lost my father when I was 16. So I know what it feels like when all your friends and the people around you can go and study and have the varsity life and the car. And I just did not have that. I had to be so dependent at a young age. And I think that's the problems that we face yeah. more than you would know. And I think it shocks if we look at the statistics of how many people don't have the finances to study. Um, so knowing what it feels like, being one of those um, statistics, mm. I almost want to say, it was a lot more personal, like having that yeah. first that experience. I wanted to enable other people. It changed my life. Mm -hmm. Boston City Campus gave me an opportunity to study my marketing degree, which I got in 2020. Yeah. So I really just wanted to do that for someone else. Being mm. Miss South Africa, if you think about it, you can really, really reach out. You can be that connecting point to the person who really needs it, to the person who can give it. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes from a per personal aspect. You can only move forward when you have education, right? So Natasha, we do know that you are a second time participant uh, in the Patient Chi, or should I say the Women Empowerment Platform. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, what would you say uh, to women who are currently pursuing their dreams? Yes, for me it would really be designing your own destiny. Um, because for me life is all about second chances, but you can't wait for that opportunity. You need to create it yourself. Even though things might be hard to, to go through a journey like that, give it your all and publicly failing, like even going to Miss Universe and not placing at all, it was really hard to come back home to a country that expected something. And I think um, for me it was not just saying, okay, I want to be Miss South Africa, but really creating that opportunity for myself again. It's like you have to work for it, you can't wait for it to fall in your lap. So if you chase it, chase it boldly, do it fully, do it 100%. I was so, so scared coming back, maybe not win winning again, like not winning again. Um, you know, coming from second runner up, not placing at Miss Universe, so I know what failure feels like in a sense. And I think for me, it felt like I offered up a lot coming back, like what if I really just, what if I'm second this time again and not winning? So it was almost like believing fully in myself. No one else can give that belief for you. And I think for me it was really just um, forgetting the past and all that PTSD and the doubt and the imposter syndrome and saying like, I know what I'm capable of. No one needs to reassure me. Um, and have the people around you that support you to, that enables you to do it. Now Natasha, we, some would say your stories of tenacity and perseverance. Today is International Women's Day. And what do you think summits like this, conferences like this, what is the importance of gathering women in such rooms um, in terms of representation and telling their stories? 
what I do love about this summit, I've seen some of the guest speakers and I'm a fan myself of many of the women that, that's going to be here today and I really want to, you know, network and get, get some advice from them. But honestly speaking, I think you can be a corporate CEO, you can really run a multi-millionaire business, but everyone has that one story that makes us human. And I think for me, I'm coming for a different aspect. I'm coming to relate to other women and their struggles. Um, because I think it's so easy to compare your day one to someone's month 100. And um, yeah, you are faced with someone like Tyler that just won a Grammy at 22 and you're like, but I wasn't that at 22 where yeah, it should be a space of what do we have in common? And I think celebrating that together is what International Women's Day should be all about. Yes, we can still envy, we can have our role models, but to remember that it's human beings, literally human beings. So when I go on stage today, really want to more bring a personal story and and make every single woman sitting there feel seen and heard and, and feel like things are normalized. Grief is normalized, depression is normalized, failure is normalized. But then speaking on giving yourself that second chance, standing back up and, and I feel like that's what my journey also showcased.